Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be taking you through a personal project of mine. So a little backstory, I recently moved into this house and I would like to do things such as control my smart lights. I want to be able to track the progress of my 3D prints. I want to check the weather all the time. I want to be reminded to take my bins out. I want to know when my washing machine is done washing my clothes. So all of these things I want to know when they're happening, the status of things, but also I want to be able to control certain things like the lights. So I plan to hang a tablet on the wall in the living room that way I can do all of these things. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through how I manage this project and keep track of the progress using a piece of software called Miro. So Miro is an online whiteboard. Think of it like a massive whiteboard on the internet. And one of the most powerful features of Miro is the template repository. There are many templates to choose from and I'm going to be showing you the three that I'm using as I go through the development of this home dashboard project. And real quick, thank you to Miro for sponsoring today's video. Let's have a look at the first template here, which is called Brain Writing. Now, I use the Brain Writing template to record all of the ideas and requirements that I get for the home dashboard project. So while I'm out doing something else, like having coffee in the dining room or working outside, I am constantly thinking of ideas for this home dashboard project and I will write them down here as soon as I get a chance. This is where all of the ideas flow in and it really is the start of the whole development process. So let me quickly show you how to add in a new template. So if we go on the left side right up here, we can choose the templates icon. Now, this right here is a repository of many different templates to choose from. Some of these are created by Miro themselves. Some of them are community created uh, and even by uh, certain companies which you may have heard of. So if I was to do a search here for brain writing, we're going to see it's one of the uh, more popular templates and I can simply choose to either preview like this, but also I can use templates. So upon clicking on this, we're going to you know, be presented with a new brain writing template right here. And it's got a bunch of data pre-filled, but I am gonna remove this and go back up to my existing brain writing template. So we can see here, like I mentioned earlier, I'm using this to record my ideas and requirements. Let me take you through it. So. Essentially, on the top row here, these are all the software-based requirements and ideas. So, all of, all of these things here are purely on the software side of things that are created with code. For example, the ability to update light colors in the house via the UI. I've also got things like trigger voice commands through Google Assistant, if that's possible. Um, you know, sound 30 minutes before the bins outside are due to be put out and so on. So these are all the software side of things. Now, on the second row, uh, using a different styling here, um, I've chosen to keep all of the server slash architecture side of things. For example, host or build this app with Docker, host it on a server PC use an always on tablet mounted to the wall. So everything here is styled to be separate from the software side and that's just for organization. You don't have to do that, but I think the beauty of Miro here is the ability to customize this as you wish. And this is how I've chosen to do it. You can of course click on this here, you can change the colors, you can change how it looks, the font and so on. Now, one thing to mention also is the ability to add tags to these sticky notes. I've chosen to use the important tag here on the update light colors via the UI because when I go and leave my office, I want to be able to easily go bang and turn off the lights. So I'm using a tag here to say important and I can add that tag on. You can of course add you know different tags as you wish. You can do must-haves, nice-to-haves and things like that. 
Um, but yeah, so we can see here, this is where I sort of keep all the ideas and requirements for the home dashboard project. The next template I'd like to showcase is the Kanban board. Now, I'm sure many of you have used or at least heard of Kanban boards before, especially if you went to school or university to study software development or agile processes. And I think that, of course, Kanban boards are super valuable for team environments. Everyone inside the team can hop on a whiteboard like this one and they can do things like add cards, they can drag those cards around, they can add assignees, set due dates, and it just provides a really good way to track the development side of a project. But as a solo developer working on this home dashboard project, I also find value in this Kanban board for two main reasons. The first reason is very similar to uh, its purpose in a team environment, and that is to, of course, track the development of this project. Nothing is more satisfying than dragging the unit test card from in progress into done or even dragging the drier integration into in progress, right? So I think it really helps track your development progress, but also it can help you stay motivated, okay? Working on a personal project like this, you probably know how it feels to just give up and not finish the project. I definitely find myself in that situation um, frequently. It's happened before, it's going to happen again, but having this Kanban board helps me stay motivated. I can see everything here. And if I look at this every day, I can't ignore the backlog, right? So I think it's good practice and it's, and it's healthy to see where you are during the development phase. Now, I'll quickly show you here what I like to do. So um, I basically will take things from the brain writing ideas and requirements and convert them into a useful card inside the backlog. And you may already expect this next part, which is of course, I drag them into the in progress when I'm about to start it and so on. Now you can do the same thing, like you can change the colors here. You can do things like add those same tags, like important, you know, must do and so on. You can even add statuses if you don't wish to use the swim lanes. You can add those assignees in those team projects and also, um, you know, setting those due dates. So we can see here, like I said earlier, I love to use this Kanban board just to keep track of my development, but also helps me stay focused on this home dashboard project. And hopefully I'll have something for you guys in the next few months to present. Lastly, I want to show you the two by two prioritization matrix. Now, this one here really surprised me, okay? Because if you've worked in the industry, you probably know uh, one of the hardest things to do is to prioritize your work, but also prioritize the tasks involved within a major project such as this home dashboard. So we can see here, this matrix has the Y axis, which says importance, and you've got the X axis, which says urgency. And of course, that produces here four um, different sections on the matrix. So in the top right corner, everything inside here is of high importance and high urgency. And I've chosen to place the backend API and the user interface in this section, because of course, without those two things, the app is useless. I've also chosen to put the uh, units and integration tests in high importance, but not high urgency. Now, that might be a bad move. Maybe it's better they go in the high urgency, but I'll leave that there for now. But also, of course, the tablet hardware is quite important because without the tablet, the main benefit of this dashboard is sort of lost, but it's not high urgency at the moment. And that right there, that at the moment is actually crucial to the power behind this matrix because something like this is much more powerful when you come back to it frequently. If this is checked every day, things might change around. Let's have a look at the notifications uh, sticky note right here. Currently, it's low importance and low urgency. I probably will never get around to having notifications appear out of this home dashboard uh, app, right? But as I head towards the end of the project, maybe the user interface drops down to low urgency. 
it's almost done. I don't care about that anymore, right? Then notifications, bang, appears in the high importance, high urgency. So if you're constantly updating this uh, matrix, which of course I am going to do as I you know, move forward with this project, but if this is constantly updated, I think that is where the true power of this prioritization matrix is found. And that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. Now, I'm gonna be leaving a link down below to Miro so you can jump right into your first free whiteboard. And I hope I actually finish this project in the next few months so I have something to show you guys. But uh, once again, thank you to Miro for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you in the next one.